In this next section, we will look at the situation where there are changes in things that we assumed that were constant. In this part of the video, we will look at what happens when the consumer's income changes, the price of related goods changes, consumer preferences changes, expectations about the future, and the exchange rate changes. When the previous when any of the previous value variables change, the entire demand schedule changes. Since the demand scale changes, the demand will change positions as well. In the table there are three columns. The first column lists the prices of various books in the economy. The second column represents the quantity demanded at various prices before there is an increase in the individual's income. And the last column represents the quantity of books demanded after the individual's income has increased. Before the individual's income has increased, the quantity demanded when the price of the book is $5 is 5 books. After the person's income increases, the quantity demanded changes from 5 to 15 when the price of the book is $5. Similarly, after if a person's before the person's income increases at a price of three dollars per three dollars per book, the individual demands twenty five books. After the person's income increases, the price and the price of the book is three dollars. The quantity demanded changes to thirty five books. Notice that at each price, the amount that is demanded increases. If we were to graph all the prices and quantities of the books demanded before the person's income increased, we would get a demand curve D0. If we were to graph the prices and quantities of books after the person's income increased, we would get a demand curve D1. There are two things to note about this graph. First, the entire graph or the entire curve line shifts or moves over to a new position to the right because the demand for books at every price has increased. Second, demand curves are given names using the letter D and a subscripted number. The subscripted number represents how old or recent the demand curve is. Lower numbers represent older demand curves and higher numbers represent newer demand curves. Thus, in the graph depicted above, D0 is older than D1. Indeed, D0 represents the original demand curve and D1 represents the newer demand curve after the increase in income. The graph in this slide shows that the quantity demanded increases at $3 as a result of an increase in an individual's income. Notice that on the demand curve D0, the, the quantity demanded is 25 books. This is labeled Q0. After the shift in demand to the right, the quantity demanded is 35 books, labeled Q1. Like with naming demand curves, quantities are labeled using different numbers to indicate how old or how recent they are. Thus, Q0 is the original quantity and older than Q1, which is the quantity after the shift in the demand curve takes place. Now let's include a supply curve with our diagram uh, with the shift with the demand. Notice that like the, the demand, the shift is given a name using S and a number. The smaller the number, the older the supply curve is. Traditionally, the first supply curve is given the name S0. Once the shift has taken place, may we may wish to observe what happens to the amount of good that is being demanded. In particular, there are three things of interest to us. First, what happens to the equilibrium point? Second, what happens to the equilibrium price? Third, what happens to the equilibrium quantity? Let's look at what happens when there is a shift in the demand to the right. In the place where the original demand curve D0 crosses the original and only supply curve S0, Crossing of D0 and S0 creates an equilibrium point E0. Equilibrium points are often given a name using the letter E and a number indicating how old or recent the equilibrium point is. The equilibrium quantity is 
25 books, which is Q0, and the equilibrium price is $3, P0. Next, the individual or group of consumers receives an increase in income. The income triggers their demand curve to shift to the right from D0 to D1. D1 crosses the supply curve at a new place, creating a new equilibrium point, E1. Once again, the one in the name tells you that this equilibrium point is more recent than E0. If we draw a line from the equilibrium point to the quantity axis, there is a new quantity associated with the new equilibrium point, E1, of 35 books and is called Q1. If we draw a line from the equilibrium point E1 to the price axis, there is a new price associated with the E1 equilibrium of $4 and is called P1. Notice that Q1 is farther along the quantity axis. It has a value of 35 books than Q0 which has a value of 25 books. So the quantity of books available has increased as a result of the shift in the demand curve. The quantity has increased from Q0 to Q1 or from 25 books to 35 books. Also notice that P1 is higher on the price axis. It has a value of $4 than P0. So the price of an individual book has increased as a result of the shift of the demand curve. The price has increased from P0 to P1 or from $3 to $4. There are six things that can shift the demand curve. They are income, tastes and preferences, prices of related goods, expectations, number of buyers, and changes in the exchange rate. A change in income will cause the demand curve to shift either to the right or to the left depending on the type of good and how income changes. A normal good is a good whose demand curve shifts to the right when an individual or group of individuals' incomes increases. This definition implies that if an individual or group's income decreases, the demand for the good will shift to the left. Vacations to Hawaii are likely to fall under this category of goods, or better food, or more desired places to live, or better transportation. An inferior good is a good whose demand curve shifts to the left when an individual's or group's income increases. The definition also implies that increases in, in decreases in income will cause a rightward shift of the demand curve. Inexpensive foods, less desirable places to live, poor transportation, and inexpensive clothing are likely to be inferior goods. In the example, a person's income increases from $10,000 to $70,000. An economist is interested in what happens when an individual's consumption of organic beef. Since organic beef is likely to be a normal good, an increase in a person's income is likely to cause a shift to the right of the demand curve. Once the demand curve has shifted, the economist would then draw a line from the new equilibrium point to the quantity axis and label it Q1. The economists would observe that Q1 is to the right of Q0, implying that Q1 is larger than Q0. He or she would then conclude that the equilibrium quantity has increased because Q is farther along the quantity axis than Q0 is. The economists would also draw a line from the equilibrium point to the left to the price axis and label the new point P1. The economist would observe that P1 is higher on the price axis than P0, implying that P1 is larger than P0. He or she would then conclude that the equilibrium price has increased because P1 is higher than P0. Thus, the result of an increase in a person's income will cause the demand curve for a normal good to shift to the right, causing the equilibrium quantity to increase and the equilibrium price to increase. An example of an inferior good is 
if a person's income increases from $10,000 to $70,000, an economist would be interested in knowing what happens to the in individual's consumption of ramen noodles. Since ramen noodles are likely to be an inferior good, an increase in the person's income is likely to cause a shift to the left of the demand curve for ramen noodles. Once the demand curve has shifted, the economist would draw a line from the new equilibrium point to the quantity axis and label it Q1. The economist would observe that Q1 is to the left of Q0, implying that Q1 is smaller than Q0. He or she would then conclude that the equilibrium quantity had decreased because Q1 is closer to zero along the quantity axis than is Q0. The economist would also draw a line from the equilibrium point to the price axis and label the new point P1. The economist would observe that P1 is lower on the price axis than P0, implying that P1 is smaller than P0. He or she would conclude that the equilibrium price had decreased because P1 is lower than, Q0, or than P0. Thus, the result of an increase in a person's income would cause the demand curve for an inferior good to shift to the left, causing the, both the quantity, equilibrium quantity to decrease and the equilibrium price to decrease. Taste and preferences are another thing that can influence the demand for a good. If an individual prefers one good over another, his or her demand for the preferred good will cause the demand curve of the good to shift to the right. Indeed, the whole point of advertising is to help us to prefer one good over another, causing the demand curve for that particular good to shift to the right. If an individual does not prefer a good, the demand for that good will shift to the left. Individuals decide that eating at oranges is better for their health and they, their preferences change will cause the demand for oranges to shift to the right. As individuals demand more oranges, the demand curve will shift from D0 to D1. Once the demand curve has shifted, the economists would draw a new line, a line down from the new equilibrium point to the quantity axis and label it Q1. The economists would observe that Q1 is to the right of Q0, implying that Q1 is larger than Q0. He or she would conclude that the equilibrium quantity has increased because Q1 is further along the quantity axis than Q0. The economist would also draw a line from the equilibrium point to the left to the price axis and label the new point P1. The economist would observe that P1 is higher on the price axis than P0, implying that P1 is larger than P0. He or she would then conclude that the equilibrium price has increased because P1 is higher than P0. Thus, the result of an increase in a person or the change in a person's preferences towards oranges would cause the demand curve for oranges to shift to the right. The shift to the right in turn would cause the equilibrium quantity and the equilibrium price to increase. Another important factor in deciding the behavior of a demand curve is the price of related goods. There are two types of related goods. A substitute is a good that has similar characteristic as the good in question so much that it can be used instead. For example, store brand canned peas have the same general characteristics as name brand Piece, and thus store brand peas can be substituted for the name brand peas with similar results. The demand for substitutes moves in the opposite direction of the good it is being substituted for. For example, an increase in the demand for store bought branded peas will cause the demand for name brand peas to shift to the right. A complement is a good that must be used with another good. The classic example is automobiles and gasoline. Automobiles must have gasoline in order to run. Another example is washing detergent and washing machines. The demand for the complement will move in the same direction as the original good. An increase in demand for washing machines will cause an increase in demand for washing detergent. Or a shift to the right in the demand for washing machines will cause a shift to the right for the washing detergent. 
Let's see what happens for demand for store-bought brand potato chips and the price of name brand potato chips. As a result of an increase in the price of name brand potato chips, more consumers will purchase the store brand potato chips. As more consumers purchase the store brand potato chips, the demand for store brand potato chips will shift to the right. At the same time, they will purchase fewer bags of name brand potato chips, causing the demand for the name brand potato chips to shift to the left. Let's look at complements. If the demand for SUV shifts to the right, the demand for gasoline will shift to the right as well, because drivers of SUVs will demand more gasoline to keep their vehicles running. Expectations about the future prices of goods will cause the demand curve to shift. Generally, if a consumer thinks that prices will increase, the demand for the good will shift to the right as more consumers try to buy before the price increases, causing the demand curve to shift rightward. Similarly, if consumers think that the price will decrease, then the demand for the good will shift to, to the left as consumers wait for the price drop before buying the good. If oil wholesalers feel that there might be a war between the United States and Iran, they will begin to buy more oil on the market to protect their supply. As the wholesalers increase their demand for oil, the demand curve for oil will shift to the right. Once the demand curve has shifted, the economists would draw a new line from the equilibrium point to the quantity axis labeled at Q1. The economists would observe that Q1 is to the right of Q0, implying that Q1 is larger than Q0. He or she would conclude that the equilibrium quantity has increased because Q1 is farther along the quantity axis than Q is Q0. The economists would also draw a line from the equilibrium point to the price axis and label the new point P1. The economists would observe that P1 is higher on the price axis than P0, implying that P1 is higher than P0. He or she would then conclude that the equilibrium price has increased because P1 is higher than P0. Thus, as a result of the increase in demand for oil will cause the equilibrium quantity and the equilibrium price both to increase. As the number of buyers of a good increases, the demand for the good will shift to the right. The increase in the number may be due to a general key increase in the number of individuals living in the economy, or that maybe some part of the population may have a, a sizable increase. Let's look at an example of health care. Generally, older people demand more health care than younger people. As the population gets older, the number of individuals demanding health care increases. As the number of older people demanding health care increases, the demand curve will shift to the right. Once the demand curve has shifted, the economists would draw a line down from the new equilibrium point to the quantity axis and label it Q1. The economists would observe that Q1 is to the right of Q0, implying that Q1 is larger than Q0. He or she would then conclude that the equilibrium quantity has increased because Q1 is farther along the quantity axis than Q0. The economists would also draw a line from the equilibrium point to the left to the price axis and label the new point P1. The economists would observe that P1 is higher on the price axis implying that P1 is larger than Q0. He or she would conclude that the equilibrium price has increased because P1 is higher than P0. Thus, an increase in the number of older people demanding health care will cause the equilibrium price of health care to increase and the quantity of health care being provided to also to increase. One of the most important determinants of demand of, for a country's good is the exchange rate. The exchange rate is the cost of buying another country's currency to spend when traveling or buying foreign goods. For example, if a Russian travels to the United States, he or she will need to give up 23.5 rubles, the Russian currency, in order to acquire one U.S. dollar. Or, if a Russian travels to France, he or she will need to give up 37.5 rubles in order to get a euro, the currency of France. If an American travels to France, he or she need to give up $1.60 to get a euro to spend it in France. 
There are two terms associated with exchange rates, appreciation and depreciation. The term appreciation means that one currency is able to buy more of another currency. For example, if the US dollar was able to purchase 25 rubles on Monday and on Tuesday it was able to purchase 35 rubles, the economists would say the dollar has appreciated or become more valuable or stronger. Another term associated with exchange rates is depreciation, which means one currency is less able to purchase is able to purchase less of another currency. For example, if the US dollar was able to purchase 30 rubles on Monday and on Tuesday it was able to purchase 20, the economists would say that the doctor had the dollar had depreciated or had become weaker. When a currency appreciates, two things happen to demand. The demand for foreign goods will shift to the right because the foreign goods will now be cheaper and the foreign demand for US goods will shift to the left because the American goods will now be more expensive. When a currency depreciates, foreign produced goods become more expensive and domestic produced goods become less expensive. That is to say, the US demand for foreign goods would shift to the left and the foreign demand for US goods would shift to the right. If the US dollar appreciates, foreign goods become cheaper for Americans to buy. Since foreign goods become cheaper for Americans to buy, Americans will buy more of them causing the demand for foreign goods to shift to the right. The equilibrium quantity of foreign goods will increase and the equilibrium price for foreign goods will also increase. If the US dollar appreciates, American goods become more expensive for individuals in foreign countries to buy. Since American goods are more expensive, foreigners will buy fewer of them, causing the demand for American goods to shift to the left. The equilibrium quantity of American goods would decrease and the equilibrium price of American goods would decrease. If the exchange rate depreciates, the US goods become cheaper for foreigners to buy. Since American goods are now cheaper for individuals in foreign countries to buy, they will buy more of them. As foreigners buy more American goods, the demand for American goods will shift to the right. As a result of the shift to the right of the demand curve, the equilibrium quantity of American goods sold to individuals in other countries increases and the equilibrium price of American goods will increase. If the exchange rate depreciates, foreign goods will become more expensive for Americans to buy. Since foreign goods are more expensive for Americans to buy, Americans will buy less foreign goods. As Americans buy f fewer foreign goods, the demand for foreign goods shifts to the left. As a result of the shift to the left of the demand for foreign goods, the equilibrium quantity for foreign goods sold to Americans will decrease and the equilibrium price of foreign goods will also decrease.